There's something about these characters that have this burning desire inside of them that I'm really attracted to. Uh, they, they believe the impossible is possible, and, and um, fairy tales seem to touch that the most for me out of, of all the kinds of stories. And this particular story of a girl who's born with this, from this magical flower and has this, this gift inside of her that, that has to be shared, I, I really related to, maybe it's being an artist at Disney for 36 years, you start to feel like you're in a tower sometimes and you've got, how do you break out? How do you become yourself? And, and I really related to this, this story and, and started to develop it and at a certain point, presented it to Michael Eisner, and he said, yes, let's do that movie, and I had done all these drawings, and he, uh, he, um, he said, there's one thing, Glenn, I, I want you to do it in CG. And I said, well, Michael, do you like these drawings? And he says, oh, I love them. And I said, well, you can't do them in CG. You, did, you, can't, you can't get all the things that I love in, in hand-drawn in CG. And he, he said, but that's why I want you to do it there, that way. Find a way to take the best of both worlds, put them together, and I, I really thought it was a very honest challenge, and uh, I took that and continued to work on it for until uh, uh, about 2008 when I actually I had a heart attack and I had to step back from it. Um, and fortunately, uh, Byron and Nathan were there, and you know, I don't think you can direct a picture without making it your own. We had always wanted to work with Glenn. He's the the guy, the Disney legend. You know, he designed Ariel and he designed the Beast and Beating the Beast and Aladdin. And so uh, when we had the opportunity to uh, direct the film, of course we said yes, let's let's do this. And then we wanted Glenn to be there with us, working with the animators. And what makes and you know you see how beautiful the uh, animation is in the film. That's because Glenn's influence is in there. And so every every animation session, Nathan and I would be there, sort of in front of this group of about forty animators acting out. The movie seemed to seem like he would be Flynn. You can see he's got resemblances to Flynn, a little beard, very adorable, handsome man, very let's good. Let's do some acting. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> Here's sequence five. And you've, um, got, the, and you've got the hair. That's true, I've got the law, I'm working on the hair. And uh, I would be Rapunzel sometimes, and we'd switch back and forth. And the interesting thing was that Glenn would be there uh, with an electronic tablet, an electronic drawing tablet called a Cintiq, and he would, he'd be watching us, and he'd be very, very quiet. And then he'd go around, and he'd just come, go like this. And then two seconds later, there'd be this beautiful drawing of Nathan or myself or one of the other animators or, you know, or, or, or one of our writers as Rapunzel or Flynn. Then the animators take that back to their desks and they make their animation a thousand times better than it was. And you can see the results on screen. And it just, it's, it's a part, of that, uh, part of that collaboration. We wanted it to be a Disney movie. I mean, we wanted it to feel like something that would really sit on the shelf next to you know, Cinderella and, and Pinocchio and, and all those great films. But we wanted it to be a contemporary film as well. And so how do you do that? Because there's an expectation when, when I'm sure with all of you, when, you, when you're going to come see this, there's an expectation it's Disney's you know, fairy tale here. So it's like there's something that you guys want, I, I truly believe, when you're going to see one of these movies. So uh, we had to make sure we got that right. And, and, but we wanted to be contemporary as well. And I think that's something that at times, uh, when you say you're going to do contemporary, there's been films like Shrek. Uh, I'm not putting down Shrek at all, but it's like, but Shrek, uh, you know, that pokes fun at these kinds of movies, and that it's very snarky, and it's it's it's. But that's what the movie is, and it made a lot of money, and hooray. But um, <laughs> people like it, okay. But so, but for us, like, we wanted to do something. Uh, we wanted to do a very sincere story. I mean, we wanted to do like a very real uh, telling of this of this story. Uh, so we were trying to find the balance. So one of the things that we were doing was we were looking at the, the films of the 1940s and 1950s that, that Walt Disney had made. And we love those movies. That's, you know, that's Pinocchio, that's Cinderella, that's Alice in Wonderland, those movies. And we thought if we could take that look and that, all that heart and that emotion that were in those kinds of movies, put it into a contemporary film, we thought that could be our balance. Um, and it'd be CG, so that could be also, you know, you take this sort of the house style of those films, and in the computer, it would be something fresh and new again. But it, so we wanted something that you could relate to, but at the same time, I mean, we're competing against, you know, modern movies when, when this comes out. We can't just make sort of like, here's a 1950s tale, everybody. Like, I don't, you know, that, I don't think that would play that well. Uh, so it, it, that was the balance for making the film, and that's what Byron and I were trying to do. One of the reasons that um, 
that obviously it's got a contemporary element, is obviously the use of computer generated animation. Um, I mean, it's a huge achievement in terms of, I think it's like 46,000 lanterns in that scene. Mm. It's like you've got to try and do, you've got to try and animate the 70 foot of hair and make it feel real. And I think what's about 140,000 strands of individual hair and each and all of those kind of bend and move in a certain way. I mean, that's a huge challenge for the animators, isn't it? That hair was, uh, what, seven years in development and we have this team of, of very, very brilliant mathematicians and, and uh, tech people who are figuring this stuff out. And even like last year, around the same time in January, it wasn't working, and we would have scene after scene where things were just going terribly, terribly wrong with uh, Rapunzel's hair. Those were her bad hair days, and uh, we decided that we needed. Oh, to it sounds it. funny now. It, <laughs> <laughs> it was not funny then. Uh, we just, we sat down with our guys and we said we have to make this work, otherwise we don't think we can finish the film. And we're because no one had done this before. You know, even back on Monsters Inc., which was a number of years ago, a fur was a brand new thing for CG, and that was remarkable at the time. And and up until uh, n us, I think you'll you'll see a lot of other CG films will have short bobbed hair that doesn't in doesn't intersect with the shoulders because it's incredibly difficult. It's so time consuming because you have to take into, into account, like you said, 140,000 strands, this, the, all these objects that are colliding with shoulders and and uh, have to look natural and have to be art directed, you know, by Glenn's drawings and things like that. And not only does it just have to hang there and look beautiful and conditioned and shiny, like a Pantene commercial, but it also has to uh, behave uh, properly when we have her do these wild things with it. She's got a lasso, Flynn, she's got to tie him up, she's got to swing from it, she has to go underwater, which you're never, ever supposed to do with uh, CG hair, it's totally taboo. Um, so this is the cutting edge of hair technology, and anything you want to know about hair, you can ask us later, and we'll tell you good hair care tips. I mean, if you wanted to build the entire New York City and have it explode, in the computer, eh, no problem. You know, to see you know, the software people go, oh yeah, we can do that. But if you say, now we want Rapunzel to to touch her hair, it's like, oh no, 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 no please, <laughs> do not touch her hair. It's like, whoa, you, this is a 18 year old. She thinks by touching her hair, and. We had to to really overcome that that challenge, and you guys fortunately were were there to champion the animators' desire. You know, I, I want the character to touch the hair. Yes, yes, please do it. And the CG folks, uh, you know, some of the software people are looking at you like, what? Whose friend? Uh, whose side are you on? <laughs> it's like we're on the side of Rapunzel. We want her to be real. <laughs>